This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. I'm Professor Richard Gershon from the University of Mississippi School of Law, host of In Legal Terms. If you're enjoying this podcast, I encourage you to listen to In Legal Terms, the show about you and your rights. We find interesting legal topics to bring to you and let you know how the law affects you. Find In Legal Terms on any podcasting platform on your smart device or on our website, inlegalterms.mpbonline.org. From MPB Think Radio, this is Money Talks. Kevin Farrell here with Dr. Nancy Lotter-Janderson, president of New Perspectives, and Ryder Tapp, portfolio manager at New Perspectives. They're both chartered financial analysts, and Ryder holds the Certificate in Investment Performance Measurement from the CFA Institute. So our guest in studio this morning is Mississippi's Commissioner of Insurance, Mike Cheney. We hope to talk about the different types of insurance, tips for shopping for insurance, and combating insurance fraud. But it's Tuesday morning, so we're looking for your personal finance questions as well. You can send an email to money at mpbonline.org. So good morning, Ryder. Why don't we start with you with uh, financial news in the news? Good morning. So I was looking at one of Nancy and I's favorite economic releases, the employment situation, and I found lots of fun vocabulary, which is kind of important and has been on everyone's minds. One of them was, it sounds it sounds very rude, but it's permanent job losers. Don't worry, you're not... You're not a loser. Don't feel that way. Um, And this refers to people who've been involuntarily laid off. And that's something that was in the news a lot over the past three months as we heard about these large tech companies doing these large layoffs. And we were kind of wondering, how does this show up in the data? Uh, So some of that is they've announced these layoffs that aren't going to occur for a few months, or maybe they're occurring over a period of time. Sometimes these are layoffs where they lay off 10,000 people, but they ask people to reapply for... 8,000 jobs. So it's really a lot smaller than it looks. So those have gone up a little bit, but folks who are re-entering, so re-entrance, re-entrance to the workplace, still higher than those, than those, uh, permanent job losers. So there's still more people coming uh, coming off the couch, as it were, and trying to find jobs than there are people being sent home to the couch. And so that's, a, that's still a good sign. And the labor force participation rate, we actually talk about this a good bit. It's ticked up a little bit, but I'd like to dig into that and see who is participating in the labor force, because that's the dynamic of, oh, is it a bunch of high school kids are jumping in the labor force because it's summer, or is it that uh, older folks who are maybe would normally be retiring aren't retiring? And and I think what we're seeing is very good news. Uh, the kind of prime age between 25 and 55, those folks, that that's a nearly all-time high as far as I can tell uh, for participation in the labor force. That means they're either looking for a job or have a job. And so that's great. That's who you want working. Uh, and then uh, folks above 55, that's really leveled out. Uh, they kind of had a peak before the pandemic and never really recovered that. Uh, you see a few surges where people were maybe getting back to work, but then it just looks like they decided work wasn't what all those cracked up to be, and they really wanted to stay retired. So I think that's a good sign when people are comfortable with their situation enough to stay out of the labor force. Of course, it's not all voluntary. But uh, I think it's a good sign that we are shifting more to a much more uh, employed prime age workforce. So good morning, Nancy. What about you? What caught your eye financially speaking this week? Well, I've been watching this story about Exxon. And it's quite interesting to me because anytime you start to hear about mergers and acquisitions, that is a positive sign for the economy and for the markets uh, as they start to look at how to use their cash and business opportunities. Exxon in particular is about consolidation in the oil industry, and so we're starting to see that happen. Um, Certainly we are moving away from the use of oil with transportation being the largest piece that uses oil as we move towards electric vehicles, but we'll still be using oil for a long time. So that consolidation within the industry will continue to happen. These are still good companies, a lot of cash that they have on their books. And so anytime that activity is going on, 
we take that as a positive sign. Also, if you start to see IPOs, initial public offerings, that's a positive sign for the market as well and for investors. This is Money Talks on MPB Think Radio. If you have a personal finance question that Nancy and Ryder can help you with, you can email the show by sending it to money at mpbonline.org. But I've as mentioned a couple of times, joining in studio this morning is the Commissioner of Insurance, Mike Cheney. Uh, Commissioner Cheney, thanks for joining us. So we were talking before the we went on the air. You extremely busy, so we do really appreciate you giving us an hour of your time. Um, and I don't know that a lot of people know that you wear two hats, both the Commissioner of Insurance and the state's fire marshal. So if you would tell us a little bit about the kind of the day to day duties on on each one of your responsibilities. Well, on the day to day duties of the Commissioner of Insurance, our, our basic job is to make certain that companies are solvent enough to pay a claim, a valid claim. And the other part is to protect the consumers from uh, any practice that we think is unfair to the consumers. Uh, the statute is fa- fairly simple. Uh, there are about 900 pages that enforce the statute, but the statute is really simple. <laughs> it's just uh, it, it makes life hard if you got a lot of lawyers in your office. But uh, <laughs> our job is to be certain that companies are solvent, one, uh, that they can pay their claims, and number two, that we do not – have them abusing uh, the consumers that pay claims. And, and, and we're into that today uh, on issues like Money Talks, where you would have, uh, say, insurance up in Rolling Fork or mm-hmm. any of the areas that are struck by tornadoes, and someone suddenly finds that they're not going to get a total payout on their home. It's been blown away. Mm-hmm. And the state law um, doesn't allow for full payment in some cases uh, when you have a tornado. That does if you have a fire. I've been fighting this battle for 16 years trying to get the law changed, and the legislature uh, is just kind of slow sometimes to drag their feet. Not that, I'm not complaining about them. It's just part of life, and it, we have to live within the regulations. But our job is to be certain that consumers get a fair thing. If you, It's like a contract. If you, your biggest asset is your home that you live in, and you've got to protect it completely. Now, on the fire marshal side, um, that's a real varied deal. We investigate arson cases. We have mysterious fires. Uh, there's no statutory limits on arson in the state of Mississippi. And in addition to that, we uh, inspect all the public buildings in the state to be certain they're up to uh, proper code. We use one of the last two or three uh, IBC and RRC codes. And we're real strict on being certain that uh, the state buildings are up to code. And that includes fire codes, too. I very seldom will override what a city does. I have the statutory authority to do so, but I think that's a little overreach for government sometimes. But we have stepped in um, where we need to, and it affects people's income sometimes, with, say, the uh, state library uh, and the library that's actually in Jackson, the Eudora Welty Library, because it had a lot of water damage. And the water uh, leaked down into the top floor, the second floor of the building. And with all the books, uh, the floor started buckling. So we had to close it down for a while to get it straightened out. It's, it's, it was a mess. But my job is really varied. And um, in addition to all of that, we um, manage the State Fire Academy also. And we have a lot of responsibility for a lot of the guarantee funds. Uh, I, I would just say that the Department of Insurance affects every life in the state of Mississippi from before a person is born until they die in the state. That includes burial insurance, prenatal care, health insurance, and everything in between. And that includes annuities and insurance <laughs> and <laughs> savings. Yeah. Uh, Nancy, you had something, I think? Whoops, sorry, we're not uh, – Nancy's audio is cut out for a minute, so let's um – I just think it's really interesting. It's really great to have uh, Commissioner Chain on the show because it, we, a lot of times when we talk about on the show, okay, you're, you want to save a little money on your premium, shop around for your insurance. But when you think about, just like you said, your insurance protects what in many cases folks' biggest asset, talking about fire or tornado damage to your home. Many people, not only is it a large asset, but it's one of the most important because if you don't have a home to go to, then what you're 401k is not gonna not gonna protect you from the next storm and and so it's it's that value in making sure that one you have the right coverage that's something we can talk about uh but but he is there making sure that the company providing that co- uh, coverage is going to be standing behind it is going to be dealing with you as a customer as a premium payer as a claimant fairly and so that he's protecting the the value of the value that you're protecting 
acting. So it, it just it's just another layer and a, a much bigger way of thinking about insurance and really the role that it plays in so many people's lives. Let's see if we can get Nancy in here. Have you got me? There we go, Nancy. Go ahead. Yay. <laughs> well, I want to go back to what um, kind of off of what Ryder said. And Mike, we get this question so many times, which is clients asking us, how do I know my insurance company is sound? Because when I purchase mm -hmm. insurance, it's going to be maybe a long time before I need to file a claim. So can you tell us where uh, consumers can go to see ratings and, and can they understand what those ratings mean? Well, we can send you to uh, uh, several sites that say ratings. And if you got a cell phone, just Google insurance company ratings for PNC. We used to keep them on our website, but uh, we, we've got so much on there, Nancy. We could, we've probably got 10 volumes of books on the website that we don't need there. But the bottom line is this that if you have an admitted company, and that means someone that's um, admitted and regulated by the commissioners in the various states. Now, you've got to remember, insurance is regulated on a state level, not a federal level, except for health insurance, and that's got a lot of federal fingers in it. So when we regulate someone that are admitted, we have a guarantee fund, and that guarantee fund protects you if you have a homeowner insurance and people go broke. You have protection. That's what's happening in Louisiana now with all the hurricanes that you've had. And you've had 12 companies go bail belly up, but you have a guarantee fund that protects them. And all the companies pay into that guarantee fund to be certain that people are protected. So if you have an admitted company, you're okay. Now, a non-admitted company is someone like um, a specialty company that's called uh, surplus lines. We do not regulate their rates. Uh, they're on their own. If they go belly up, you go belly up with them if they don't pay your claim. And you'll often hear, well, rates on the coast have gone up. Well, rates on the coast have not gone up for wind. And I know because I'm the guy that has to prove the rates sometime when they request them. And rates have not gone up in the wind boo. Uh, actually, they're about 9% below where they were after Katrina. Uh, and very stable. And that's, that's for 17 years now. And if you look at the rates that people are talking about, they're not admitted companies. But non admitted companies will come in, lower the rates on expensive homes, and buy their market until you have catastrophic events and they'll pull out and leave you high and dry. Or if the reinsurance market worldwide out of London, Bermuda, have problems in other areas of the world like Ukrainian uh, issues, uh, the Russian uh, invasion of Ukraine affected rates worldwide. Uh, what's happening in China today affects reinsurance, and reinsurance uh, is a big factor in cost of non-admitted companies' rates. Uh, it's, it gets complicated, but the bottom line is when you look at reinsurance, uh, just for our wind pool, it's up about 25% that what we purchased for our wind pool in this, this year. And you look at uh, where rates are. We bought ours in late February. Where they are today, they're up 40%. Uh, I predict they'll go up and then they'll drop because people have to park their money. Uh, reinsurance is based upon a one-year cycle uh, for income, and they try to make at least 7 or 8% today. They used to make 20 or 30% in the soft market. So, Ryder, you may want to My cover some of that. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that 20 or 30 sounds great. That gets My into can annuities. You, <laughs> yeah, can you explain to our listeners what reinsurance is? Reinsurance is where we just lay part of our risk off and the insurance companies to other carriers like Lloyd's of London, Swiss Re, and uh, there's a lot of um, info out on Swiss Re right now, Munich Re, which is a German company, and I, there are a whole list of them. Just, and this is where people park their capital. They think they can make more money um, putting it in the reinsurance market than they can into a bank in the U.S., so this is uh, insurance companies. An insurance company goes out and writes a thousand policies, and then they say, "Okay, well, if a hurricane comes or a tornado comes, all these houses are going to get hit. So we want someone else to help insure us." Uh, and that's what the reinsurance company yeah, doing. A, a real time, a real time deal would be: we've got a company called uh, Trishurance. I, and normally, I don't mention names on the air, but uh, they have fifteen thousand policies, mm -hmm. and they're out of Canada, and they want to pull out of the state, and they write through a broker called Orin One Hundred and Eighty. Mm -hmm. And uh, these people do not have enough reinsurance, and we're on their case. You got to have reinsurance in case you have a catastrophic loss to cover these policies. And they wanted to pull out of the state, and you said they can't do that. I won't let you do that. You can you can non renew when a policy comes up for renewal, but you can't do that during hurricane season. And I'm pretty tough on them. Um, I'm not. I, I'm a fair regulator. I like to say I'm fair, but I'm 
I can be mean when I have to be. <laughs> so, sometimes, sometimes you got to get on the phone and, and, and shake a few, shake a few. You trees. got to shake the apples out of the tree. So, you mentioned the difference between the uh, re- your regulated, admitted insurance, and then the unadmitted, the surplus line. So, and how they might try to take one part of the market, and and so those are not regulated, and those, but those have to get the reinsurance. What would really for the consumer? How can they tell the difference? Why would they want to go with an unadmitted it sounds it sounds awful <laughs> well none of them have gone broke in the last 60 years that's so 80 years so they're, they're pretty solid uh, i have a, a a very public um tv personality on the gulf coast that went to a not admitted company and was bragging to me about how much money he saved and mm. and I, I said it's gonna come back to bite you and this year he, he i saw him several weeks ago he said it bit me more than once it bit me hard <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but he had to go back to the wind pool, which was a smart thing to do so they can raise rates without having to come to you and they can pull out of the market more easily than another company is that they can pull out of the market anytime they want they have to be admitted to do a business in our state mm-hmm. and the way i normally control them is i'll say i may pull your license and call you in for a hearing to see why you why you're doing what you're doing but they they play the game hard too they know that uh, if the market's hard it means there's not a lot of people to write they can be tough too so it's a balancing act you're listening to Money Talks. Our website, moneytalks.mpbonline.org, is one way to hear past episodes. You can also download the MPB Public Media app for your smartphone. Then you get to listen on demand to all the local MPB Think Radio programs. Kevin Farrell here with Dr. Nancy Lotcher Janderson, president of New Perspectives, and Ryder Taft, portfolio manager at New Perspectives. Our guest today is Mike Cheney, Mississippi's Commissioner of Insurance. So, Commissioner Cheney, is the in, in, in insurance industry in Mississippi robust enough and in, in shopping around for any kind of insurance? Is it a good idea to shop around? Oh, you ought to shop around. You know, the, the main thing is have a good agent. Uh, you can shop online all you want to, but the best thing to do is have somebody you can talk to if you have a need. And so that means agents are, are your lifeline. And the agents in our state do a good job. Mississippi's rated um, number two in the United States. Well, Arizona and Mississippi are the best two states in the nation to be an agent in hmm. because we have we have pretty good trained agents and we have we have good systems here. But shop around and um, agents will tell you one way to reduce your automobile cost is to uh, look at your deductibles. Uh, people often ask me, what does what what do we have to have? Is there a state law? There's a state law that says you have to have liability insurance. It's operated and man and uh, enforced by the Department of Public Safety, not by the Department of Insurance. That's a highway patrol. Uh, it's twenty five fifty twenty five. It's twenty five thousand dollars. Twenty five thousand on body injury, fifty thousand total on body injury. So if you got two people in the car. They may be covered for twenty five thousand each if that's the damage you have, and the last twenty five is on property damage. Those numbers probably need to be changed on property damage. I don't think you'll ever get them lowered. Louisiana has a, a fifteen uh, thirty twenty five because of, of the trial bar, and and I'm not I don't want to pick a fight with them because I think they do a good job in the state. There's a balance right now, and. You've got to look at what it costs to repair an automobile today, and automobile rates are out of sight. I will just tell you they're absolutely out of sight, and I fuss at the companies all the time about they come in and they have these actual opinions, and by law, we have to give them something if they're within a certain range of laws, and that means if you're over 70% loss ratios, uh, that can even go up to 85% loss ratios. They have very little dollars left to uh, operate the companies well. So we have to balance those acts. That's what we talked about, rate adequacy. And the companies apply. We don't go out and tell them to raise the rates. That's not something we do. We just want to make certain they're solid. So hope that helps the listeners out there. It is a big deal. You've got to have liability insurance in the state, I'll remind you. And that's a highway patrol, not the Department of Insurance that mandates that. And so liability covers you if you're the person at fault. Is that right? It'll cover if if you somebody hits you, it will cover you. If and hope you have insurance yourself, um, and, and it will cover you up to twenty five thousand dollars on medical injury, liability insurance, and et cetera. The twenty five thousand last twenty five and that twenty five fifty twenty five is body uh, damage to your automobile, property damage is what we call it. Um, so. Um, what about some tips? You mentioned one with the deductible, but do you have some other tips that uh, people can keep in mind to try to keep their car insurance rates low? Well, one of the things you can do is buy a safe automobile. And uh, <laughs> I've, 
I, that's that's pretty diggum important. Um, I drive a pickup truck because I feel safer in it. But I've been to the Automobile Institute in Virginia. I've watched them crash cars into these huge concrete and steel blocks at 30 miles an hour. And uh, my wife was with me when we were up at the last time, and she started crying when the car hit the wall. But it's just uh, it's, it's devastating to see what happens. And then you look at the safest car on the road, and uh, I, I suggest Consumer Reports. I, I, I'm a big fan of Consumer Reports because it doesn't have a lot of ads in it. It's mm-hmm. just straight fact. Uh, it gives you a lot about if you personal finance. It gives you something every, every day about personal finance. I, I read a lot with bottom line. Uh, Riker's shaking his head. I think he might read that too. Nancy probably reads it when she's uh, got time. But it gives you some tips about how to how to invest your money and what automobile you want to buy. And that's 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 about your money because automobiles are the next thing that you got to have to get to work back and forth, and especially in our area of the country. And your home's the number one investment that you have, and the automobile might be the second. So you ought to look at gap insurance if it's a new car and it costs you over $50,000. You know, when you drive it off the lot, it's only worth about half what you paid for it. Mm-hmm. So you better, you, it's like a boat. You, you better get some gap coverage. <laughs> uh, Ryder, Nancy, any tips on uh, either shopping for insurance or trying to keep insurance rates low? I would just ask Mike, what does your wife drive? <laughs> my wife drives a Nissan, and I'll tell you why. Uh, one of my high school classmates was a vice president of Nissan, and they, if you're a friend of Nissan, they could give you a little discount, and they have a plant in the state of Mississippi. So it's a it's a very safe automobile. Um, Good, yeah. I, you know, the safest car on the road, Nancy, is, is a Subaru. I, uh, I would have guessed that, yeah. yeah. I've heard that they definitely advertise like they are, so... I'm not supposed to be ever <laughs> one of the one of the things I was curious about is you know a big part of the car insurance is your liability if you cause an accident is there besides obviously being a good driver which uh, I know everyone has opinions about all the other drivers on the road call in if you have a fantastic story there but uh, what are ways besides just being a good driver are there cars that are less liable? Are there cars that tend to cause less damage, or is that something you would look at as well? That's something you as, look as at. As a buyer. You, you look at it as a buyer, but one of the things you got to consider, um, if you buy a really expensive automobile and they got a taillight that gets broken on, it's got all these sensors in it, a taillight or a headlight just for some of the high-end cars are like four and $5,000. Oh, wow. I didn't even realize that. And that's a good point, considering the entire cost of ownership of the vehicle, or in, which includes the insurance, which includes your liability, which includes your repairs. And so you've mentioned a number of things there. And that's, uh, again, when you're looking at the financial cost, can you afford that ongoing cost of the vehicle? And well. don't forget that car tag, because in Mississippi, <laughs> um, the more expensive cars, the newer cars, that car tag will take your breath away. You can along pay, with you can pay a little others. bit for a car tag, can't you? <laughs> it's about 3% yeah. of the cost of the vehicle. It's in Mississippi. Wow. And I know a lot of the uh, the sensors are actually in the, the windshield, because I think when I had mine replaced, they asked, you know, the age of the car or whatever, but all the, the lane adjustment and all that kind of fancy stuff that they're getting yeah. in cars these days. Uh, so we, you're right. A lot of the parts of a car with these sensors have, have gone up for sure. So, uh, And, Mike, we've heard that um, – that the color of the car makes a difference, that we have data showing that maybe red cars are involved in accidents more than maybe tan cars. Is that true? Well, it's tr- I don't know about the colors. I'm going to stay away from that, but that is true. And, um, <laughs> and the color of an automobile, the uh, the type of vehicle that you drive, all of that determines your rates. And the uh, color of cars is big a big deal. Um, now, is that due more to the personality that seeks out a, a flashy red sports car, or, or what is it, Kevin? The alien green uh, car for you is that is that a dangerous color? Well, it may be the, it may be the alien green that Kevin drives. I'm not sure, but uh, the color of an automobile, the uh, the tire size on the car, the vehicle that you're driving, all of those things are factors that play in the cost of your insurance. Fascinating. 
Money Talks is MPB Think Radio's personal finance broadcast. Kevin Farrell here with Dr. Nancy Lottridge Anderson, president of New Perspectives, and Ryder Taft, portfolio manager at New Perspectives. They're both charter financial analysts, and Ryder holds the Certificate in Investment Performance Measurement from the CFA Institute. Today on the show, we're talking about uh, types of insurance available to Mississippians with our guest, the Commissioner of Insurance, Mike Cheney. Uh, So, Commissioner Cheney, what uh, should someone do if, unfortunately, they are involved in an automobile accident? The first thing you want to do, uh, generally speaking, in the metro area of Jackson, you probably will not get a policeman to come out anytime quickly. Exchange information. If you've got a cell phone, take pictures. Uh, but exchange insurance information and uh, take a picture car tag so you know each other, know how to get in contact with each other, and then you report your accident to your agent. That's extremely important. Um, we have questioned the Department of Public Safety as to whether or not the new Capitol Police will actually write accident reports. It's a, it's a really a hard thing for us when a consumer calls up and says, look, I had a, had a wreck three weeks ago. I've got a rental car, and the company won't pay for it anymore. Uh, I don't have a car. i got to have a car to go to work. I'm going to lose my job. What do I do? Hmm. So we, 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 we work through those problems with them and try to help them out. So what you do do is you make certain you exchange that information so you know who to contact. And we work with them on that. So w- some of the things that are important on automobile is just to be certain that you, you, you use common sense. And if you have a wreck, uh, the state law says you're supposed to pull out of the lane of traffic mm-hmm. and, and get on the side of the road. It's um, and I I will tell you I drive from Vicksburg every day to Jackson, forty three miles over, forty three miles back, and I cannot tell you that probably one out of every ten cars is not Texan. That means nine out of ten <laughs> yeah, are Texan. And truck, I see yeah. truckers with phones in the car. Yeah, I've noticed that. <laughs> well, I I've always wondered why people smuggling drugs get a pickup truck or from Texas or whatever and, and violate, you know, a, a lane change or speeding or whatever. I mean, yeah. maybe that's why they're criminals, because they're not too smart. That's for sure. Well, if, if I were maybe the they were but trying you... to blend in because everyone's <laughs> everyone's doing it. You know, they're just trying to blend in. I don't know what they're going to do when we have legalized uh, marijuana here, <laughs> cannabis. Anyway, that's another issue. We don't want to get that. We, so well, look, we talk about money issues. Um, I, I, very quickly, I would say, be sure you have proper insurance on your home and, mm-hmm. and know whether you have them. If you have a mortgage, you're required to have uh, in, proper insurance, at least for the mortgage amount. So you have replacement cost value, RCV, or you have actual cash value, ACV. That kind of goes along with roofs. Uh, if you have homeowner policies, that's called an HO3. Be certain that you have any excess jewelry, paintings, anything that's worth a lot of money. Put it on a schedule. Ask your agent about it. Mm. If you bought your wife a nice ring and it's not, it's not listed anywhere and you want to be certain it's covered, make sure it's on a schedule. Or your contents are normally covered on HO3 at 50% of the home value. So if you've got a $200,000 house, you probably got $100,000 in coverage on your, on your content. Uh, we're facing that in Rolling Fork today. Just, and I we, imagine we, so. It's a, that's a tough issue. Um, if, um, if you have issues... Make certain you have an inventory of what's in your home. We have apps that you can get off of our website, www.mid.ms.gov, and you can Google that if you need to, and we'll give you the app. It's free. You can take pictures. It keeps up with the value, and that avoids the hassle of, what did you pay for that car? What did you pay for that television? Because mm-hmm. the companies always want you to figure out. They, they'll Look, companies are fine, but they are, they are out to make a profit, and they're going to try to needle you down all uh, everywhere. I'm the, I'm the regulator. I'm not supposed to badmouth them. I'm not. I'm just telling It's a fact. Mm-hmm. You know, corporations do not have hearts. They're not human. <laughs> <laughs> we have got some callers on the line, so let's begin with uh, Diane, who has called in from Mobile. Diane, you're on the air with us. Go ahead. Oh, thanks for taking my call. <clears throat> Uh, my question is, could you please discuss medical payments when people are in a car wreck, whether or not it's their fault? I'm a massage therapist at Mobile, and I've used my medical payments for different wrecks and, you know, whiplash and so on, and also on my clients. And this is, um, this, this is not understood by the general population that whether or not it's your fault, your medical payments will pay for things like chiropractic, massage, um, things that may not be paid by your car insurance, and that it starts immediately. And companies that may be at liability, you know, someone else did something to you, well, you won't be pressured 
to sell your case right away because you have that coverage. It gives you the chance to get in, uh, medical treatment right away. Could you comment on, on some of that, please? Well, it, it, when you have a, if you have a wreck and you're injured and you've got medical issues, you're, uh, if you have health insurance, generally speaking, it'll, it'll cover your, most of your health needs or your medical needs. But on the other side, you've got something called subrogation, and that's a long subject, but, uh, and I can't even explain it sometime in an hour. Uh, that just says who's responsible, your insurance um, carrier or the person that calls the accidents insurance. It might be somebody else's fault. But you do have health insurance, and you and if you have health insurance, I would encourage folks to use that and not settle too quickly up front unless you're very comfortable because you never know what your injuries may be. Uh, you you want to be certain that you're getting a, a right, fair shake from the insurance companies. They'll try to get you to sign a release. Um, and I, here I'm, I'm stepping off into deep water again. Be very careful about signing a release saying, I give up everything. I want that check. I need it today. And companies will know whether or not you need the money right now. So mm-hmm. if, if you... Uh, if you <clears throat> have a little money, you probably can afford to wait. So uh, your 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 health insurance is going to be your first protocol for any sort of medical first issues. First protocol, correct. But it, it may be that they turn to your car insurance, or they may turn to the other person's car insurance to help with some of those payments. And then, and then one problem people have is maybe they have a very high deductible. What are you going to do for the first several thousand dollars if potentially? down the line someone else's car insurance would pay it what what do people do in a situation like that well it, it, you you have most plans have um deductibles that are fairly high mm-hmm. unless you're on the state plan state plans got about a two thousand dollar out-of-pocket deductible during the first year and you got to always have a copay usually 20 percent copay you still go and use your medical insurance because mm-hmm. it, it will cover part of it and it's called networking, and we that's a whole other issue that we'll get into, whether it's an HMO or PPO or all the other issues. But what you should do is to be sure and talk to your insurance agent. They will understand that's part of their training. They're supposed mm-hmm. to understand this, and uh, that's the quickest answer I can give you. You did a good job, Ryder, on, on explaining subrogation because that's basically what it is. <laughs> All right, uh, Diane, we appreciate your call. Let's uh, stay on the phone lines. Uh, next, we're going to go to Don calling in from Edwards. Good morning, Don. Go ahead, please. Yes, yeah, thank you. I was calling. I was just concerned. We, uh, out in the country, we have small robotic shops, and some insurance companies, right, they have, some, and they have different hours. And why is it so the son won't pay the, the, the right amount and the son do pay the right amount? How do y'all regulate that? Well, we don't really regulate the body shops and their payments. Um, the state law says that if you have a wreck and you have insurance, the insurance company is obligated to restore your automobile as best they can to the condition it was in before the wreck. And uh, insurance companies try to have preferred shops. They steer you to. We don't allow that in the state. We try to avoid it. Um, and companies also will try to say, uh, you got to use so and so, and we say nope. You can't do that. You know the state law is very simple. Uh, you have a right to use any body shop you want to use, and then the companies will try to underpay the shops. Uh, the body shops say you're in Edwards Dunn. They might try to pay you less than what they may pay somebody in Clinton or Jackson or or in, over in Pearl and Brandon, or or the or the automobile dealerships, hmm. and. If they do that, what you should do is to call the Department of Insurance and ask for the Consumer Division, 1-800-562-2957, and ask for a consumer, and they can help you out. All right, Don, thanks for your call. Let's uh, stay on the phone lines. Going to Pearl next. Alan has called in today. Good morning, Alan. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you all for taking my call. Um, yes, sir. I know maybe here a while back or maybe you seen years or months ago that the um, – it was about people that don't have insurance. Um, it was like you, in order to get a tag, you had to show proof of insurance. Whatever happened to that? Because I think that's a good idea if, you know, if it's passed and if it's enforced, I, you know. But you got a lot of people that don't have insurance. I mean, they can't afford it, but they just simply won't get it. 
Well, I, I, I hear you there. Let me, let, me, let me be very frank with you up, up front. I was in the legislature, and we tried to pass a law to say, look, the, the uh, tax assessor and the tax collectors, when you go to buy a tag, you got to show proof of insurance. Those people lobbied the legislature so heavy, not a legislator hardly would vote for the bill. I had the bill myself to try to make them do that. And to this day, um, th- they don't want to be the, the gatekeeper for who has insurance. So mm. it's a state law. Um, it's loosely enforced. We do have uh, some changes in the law that were passed about five years ago that allows the highway patrol to use cameras to read your tag number. And then the Department of Insurance, uh, that's me basically, require that companies dump data to the highway patrol once a week on who has insurance and who does not by tag numbers. And they try to match them up. It works fine on residential cars or private automobiles. It doesn't work very well on commercial. But to your question, you've got a good idea, but it's got to be a state law passed to make <laughs> to make Those, them do it. Make them do it. That's that's so interesting. Do you have any idea? Because I've always heard the uninsured motorist is kind of a problem in this state. Do you have ideas about where we fall with uninsured motorists and how much that does impact those who are insured in our rates? Mississippi is in the top number of people of uninsured motorists in the country. We're in the top five. Uh, Texas has a lot of un- uninsured folks. Hmm. Um, we have a, a company that reads the tags and um, they get part of the fine. Uh, they're set up in Ocean Springs now. And what happens is when they buy insurance, um, the, the, the fine goes down in half, but it, it has really made a difference. But you got to remember that the trade off that the people that normally do not have liability insurance or the required insurance are the poorest of the poor in the state. They can hardly afford the tag. It's an older car usually, and uh, they don't have insurance. Very few people will have a car that's new and not have insurance mm-hmm. because it's normally required if they have financing on it. And that's also a problem if, uh, I mean, if you have someone who low income and, and little assets and they do cause an accident, there's little way for the person who is maybe injured to recover anything there. So. Yeah, it's. I mean, it just sounds like a very. It's very unfortunate, of course, for folks who cannot afford it. But it's also very unfortunate for those who uh, are injured in that accident. Yeah, and and you do have people that abuse that system. You have, um, if you're, um, say, someone's on Medicaid, they're uh, they're not limited as to if they have a wreck, and they're usually the poorest of the poor. Mm-hmm. Um, they get sued, and and uh, the, it, it's just a nightmare. Mm-hmm. And we, we've looked at solutions for this, and um, yeah. the, the legislature has got to tackle it. It's not something I can do. I wish I could. If I, 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 could, I could probably solve it fairly quick. But the what, key, what would your solution be? My solution, would would be like? very, my solution would be that you would be limited on what you could recover if somebody were on Medicaid and driving a car mm. uh, from an attorney. Because you got people that, that that's what they do. They sue to make a lot of money. And the other thing that I would do, I would have a cheaper design type of, of comprehensive coverage for uninsured motorists that people could buy that would not cost you an arm and a leg. You ought to be able to buy uninsured motorist coverage for 30 or $40 a year, not seven, dollars $800. It's just it's ludicrous not mm. to do that. Wow. And, then, and the third thing is, since you asked, Ryder, uh, I, I Jer- love it. I love it. Uh, uh, New Jersey. I hope, we have some, I hope we have some legislators <laughs> listening. I know they're oh, on they there. Do. Look, the legislators <laughs> are great. I, I have to work with all of them. You know, we ain't even talked about fire protection, and and we talk about your money. That's why it's important. We got we get off on another trail, but let me finish up here. Uh, several states have funds where they uh, provide liability insurance, and it's it's for people that uh, have certain incomes, and there's a limit. But now you've got the other side of folks, and we shouldn't be doing that for go- government. That's not our function as government to provide liability insurance mm-hmm. for folks. And I, I kind of agree with that, you know, is, is that you, it's, it's a catch-22. Mm. Where does government stop? Government's function is to do the things that we cannot do mm. as individuals. And that comes to fire protection, law enforcement. you got to have law enforcement and fire protection. So I'm also the state fire marshal. <laughs> I, I, I regulate volunteer firefighters, and um, they they risk their life to save somebody else's life, and they don't get paid anything. And then the state auditor comes along and tells the supervisors, 
who you bought $75 worth of lunches for these guys. You can't do that on state money. They're volunteers, not state employees. Hmm. I got that law changed last year, and the auditor's a friend now, but he said, I'm just doing my job. But that's, that's not even common sense to us. These people reduce your insurance 50% yeah. by volunteering to work on a volunteer fire truck. You're listening to Money Talks on MPB Think Radio, wrapping things up on Money Talks today with our guest, Mississippi's Commissioner of Insurance, Mike Cheney. Let's get some phone calls in to wrap things up, starting with John in Jackson. John, thanks for holding. It's your turn now, so go ahead. Hey, Mike. Uh, uh, listen, just listening to you this morning, I really feel like you are on the consumer side. Thank you for all you do. Earlier in the show, you mentioned that uh, the payout for a, a house lost to fire was 100%, but not so in a tornado. I was just wondering, what was the reasoning for that, and why is the legislature resistant to making it 100%? Well, the reasoning is that companies were able to keep the legislature from passing a law that uh, they lobbied them enough to get, pass a law and said, you know, you don't have a total loss from a tornado or wind damage. And a lot of that surfaced, if you recall, during Katrina. And uh, I was familiar with that, just being in the legislature and being on the insurance committee. And um, we looked at a lot of those issues and tried to change. We did change a lot of them. We just didn't get far enough to change what would happen on wind and uh, tornado damage. And then you ended up with the anti-concurrent causation clause, which is wind versus water. And we got some of that worked out through um, Senator Worker's office. Uh, but I, I'm getting off on a rabbit trails for you. Bo bottom line is that... The legislature just has not seen fit to uh, pass a bill on that thing. And we'll, we'll come back and tackle it again. I tackle it every year and look at it. Um, it, it it's a real issue. And, and I feel like you have a contract with an insurance carrier when you buy a policy. And the world operates on contracts. We've been doing it for thousands of years, handshakes and contracts. And if you got a contract and you pay a premium to restore your house, the companies ought to replace that house. And we're facing that issue today. But now on the other side, not I'm going to take up for the insurance companies a little bit. We have people that say, wait, I'm going to get a $40,000, $50,000 extra property. I'm going to buy a cheaper house and pocket the money. And that's not what insurance is about. Insurance is, is um, protecting your assets. It's a little different from a savings plan. It's not a piggy bank to fix your home. It's to protect the assets that you have your money invested in. All right, John, thanks for your call. Let's see if we can work one final call in. It's Ditta, I believe, calling in from South Mississippi. Good morning. You're on the air with us, so go ahead. Good morning. Thank you for taking my call, and thank you so much for being here uh, on the show, uh, Commissioner, Mr. Cheney. And I, um, I'm so glad you addressed the issue about automobile insurance for low income and how it's so expensive. And this has long been a concern of mine because we have such a dearth of public transportation. So basically, to be able to work in Mississippi, you have to be able to have a car, and cars are expensive. And insurance, requiring insurance to me on a fully paid for vehicle, you know, some old clunker, is um, almost punitive in the way it plays out. And I want to give you why, an example, and then I'll ask you a question. Like, I, I went to traffic court once in a local city because I was disputing a ticket. Uh, I think it was a speeding or stop time, whatever. So I sat there all morning, several hours, and watched the parade. I, I did a we're pressed for time, so if you could go ahead and uh, we've okay, only... Okay, okay. Sorry. So, so 90, I'm just going to say 95 or 90 percent of tickets were low-income people getting several hundred dollar tickets for not having insurance on top of prior not having insurance. It was absolutely crazy. So my question is, can you address um, no fault insurance? Why can't we have no fault insurance where you get insurance if you want to, to protect yourself and your car, your body, and other people can take the risk because they can't afford it. And that's my question. I'd like to... Well, that's a quick answer to your question, Deidre. Um, No-fault insurance is proven not to work in every state that has no-fault insurance. It's been a bad idea. It sounds great. Things that sound too good to be true usually are too good to be true. 
Interesting. All right. So that will wrap us up for today. Money Talks is a production of MPB Think Radio, funded in part by generous financial support from listeners. To hear today's show or a previous show, you can visit moneytalks.mpbonline.org or listen to the podcast by searching for Money Talks. And our podcast producer is Jermaine Flood. So for Dr. Nancy Lottridge-Anderson, Ryder Taft, and our guest, Mississippi Commission of Insurance Mike Cheney, I'm Kevin Farrell, inviting you to join us every Tuesday at 9 for Money Talks, heard only on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your 